draw the weight, Lord. We have lost loved ones, Lord, during this time, and we want to give that to you, Lord. We want to give our grief to you, our our love to you as well, Lord, as you comfort us, and we want to be comforted by you, Lord, so we can in turn comfort those who need it during this time. Thank you for this special place, this special group of people, Lord, that we can continue to bless you and glorify you no matter what happens, Lord, no matter what uh, the world brings or the situation changes around us, we will be constant in serving you and glorifying you. Thank you for that privilege to be called your children. Accept our songs this morning. Accept our praise. Be with Jonathan as he presents the words he wants. Give him the strength he needs, the words he needs, Lord, the heart he needs to be able to present that to us. But also we ask that you challenge us to not only listen, to put into practice what we need to do in our lives. Thank you again. Bless us always. And may your name be glorified forever. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Let's sing. I know that my Redeemer is a dead and praying and praise for me. I know eternal life begins from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer is a dead and praying. En la cruz los demostró, yo sé, 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 yo sé,
John uh, chapter 15, verse 12 to 15 says, This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves, because a master doesn't comfort in his slaves. Now you are my friends, since I, since I have told you everything the Father told me. So I, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of friends, and a lot of friends that you love, and a lot of friends that do a lot of things for you, and, and Jesus calls us friends. And, and I don't know how many friends that you really love have told you once or many times, I love you, but I don't know how many of those friends have died for you. Well, Jesus did it for you and for me. He called us friends. Right? Jesus, Jesus died for you. And Jesus died for, for me. And for that reason, because Jesus died for us, we can enjoy this fellowship. We can be here and enjoy the peace of this place and enjoy the grace and enjoy the mercy just because our friend died for us, just because our friend loved us so much that he died for us, that he suffered on the cross for us. Just because our friend did that, so many things, we can't enjoy this, this peace, this love, this mercy, this fellowship. We have this here, many countries, many uh, cultures, many, you know, many sides, but we love each other anyway. We are in love. We are enjoying the love just because Jesus died for us. He called us friends, and he died for us. And for, for that reason, uh, we are enjoying the presence of God at this place because our high priest let us do that. So are you enjoying the presence of, of God in this place? Amen. Let's pray for the Lord's Supper. <coughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your mercy, your love, and, and your grace. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to this earth, lived among us, and died for us. Thank you for, for him calling us friends, and thank you for all the, the things that you do in our life. Thank you for every person that is here, each person that is here. Thank you for all the blessings that you are doing here, and please uh, help us to be uh, in a good way your sons, in a good way your children. Help us to be always a, a loving Jew and, and enjoying and being thankful for all the things that you do for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want, uh, I want to do something. Let's take the bread first. And I want you to think about something that you have because of the suffering that Jesus went through for you. And eat the bread while you're thinking about something that you have because of that suffering in flesh that Jesus had for you. Now let's take the juice and think about something that you have because of the blood of Christ. Anyone needs uh, one of these? You can raise your hand. Oh, okay. Now going to the offering, uh, and we can continue with the same verse, with the same concept of verses. 16 and 17 says, You didn't choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for, using my name. This is my command love each other. So we are here because we love God. We are here because we want to 
please him because we're gonna have this fellowship with, because we wanna worship him. And and he say, you didn't choose me, I chose you, and I point you to go and produce lasting fruit. And 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 the love of Jesus is not asking something for him. He's asking something for other people. If you love me, you love each other. If you love me, you love one another. If you love me, you produce lasting fruit. So part of the offering is go goes for that. Part of the part of what we give is the fruit of what we are producing because of his blessing. And we give that to the church or to anything or to a person directly because we want to love each other. Because that will bless the other person with the money. And we have a lot of missions at this church that we help, that we support. Missions in India, Indonesia. And that's because of your love for one another. So thank you for doing that. We have the offering plate in the back. Uh, and if, if you don't have money, it's okay. If you want to offer anything else, it's okay. You can offer a hat, a kiss, a smile. That's okay. You're welcome here. If you don't have any money, you can offer just your smile. And that will be very welcome here. We need smiles to love one another as well. So let's pray for the offering. Thank you, Father, for this morning. And thank you for the offering, the blessings, and all the money and food and, and, the, and the abundance of life that we have here in the United States. Thank you for, for your blessings because uh, we have everything because of you. And thank you for the missions that we support. Thank you for this family. And please uh, help us to have a good heart always and a good mind to help all the people in need. And thank you for this worship service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our family and friends, brothers and sisters. And if you're visiting for the first time, you don't know if you're already one of those. So welcome. Uh, this is the part where we do announcements. Uh, welcome to Inland Valley Church, where we love God, love people, and make disciples. Um, first announcement I have here, we have a ladies breakfast coming up December 18th. And uh, this is at Isabel's house, if you don't know where that is. Apparently, I didn't know her address. <laughs> Look at them, okay, that's the same date as Isabel's. <laughs> Janet said, that's your mother-in-law's house. Okay. <laughs> that, I didn't look at the address, so. So, breakfast, December 18th. Let's see here. Uh, yesterday, if uh, you weren't able to make it, we're here to honor the great Don. What a beautiful heart. We're going to miss him. It's a great, beautiful service. I expected laughs. It didn't disappoint yesterday. He, that's what he did. He brought laughter and love and a lot of people. So glad uh, he was part of our life and definitely part of this church. So uh, uh, November 28th, which is next Sunday, they, there will be a service for uh, Lori and Brenda's uh, memorial service. And uh, that will be at 1 o'clock here. And that will be uh, led by Timothy. So if you can make it, we'd appreciate that. Anyway, appreciate that. And if you walk in and you look towards the back, we're working on the church here. Don't think we're reconstructing the, uh, the old temple. That's not a waiting wall. That's the Caltrans building the wall about 50 feet up in the air. That's crazy than you. It's, it's, it's crazy high. So if you have any prayer requests, any need for this church to help you out, if you need someone to talk to, if you need anything, the holidays are coming up, and it can be a pretty sad time, hard time for a lot of people, um, uh, especially if you just recently lost, lost someone. Uh, please reach out to us. Let us know how we can help. Uh, let us know if there's anyone you know who can help. So, uh, please fill out the blue card, and uh, we will help you with that. And um, there is a pamphlet here, I think. 
going to bring through the prelates? Are you going to be making an announcement soon? Okay. So today we have Jonathan speaking. Can't wait to hear that. Appreciate my brother. I always love listening. So with that said, Carlos, can you come up here and do the announcement? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, if you read your bulletin, if you read through the middle, middle section, you're going to find out that we are celebrating 25 years of this building. Yes, of uh, this congregation being here in this beautiful building God's provided to us for 25 years. Okay, so make sure you guys read that story, okay? Uh, and also, we're going to be having a lunch afterwards, uh, after the service. I'm announcing it now because on the base of the teachers are going to be scattered and stuff, so we want everybody to know. There will be a lunch provided by the Reed family because today is also Tommy's birthday, okay? would have been 80 years old. My brother Tommy Reed, okay? So that's lunch has been provided by the family. So be aware of that as you go to your classes and you just get up pretty, pretty soon, okay? But again, God has been blessed, uh, has blessed this church, this congregation always at 25 years that so we've had this place. So we'll get back, okay? harvesting and uh, shortly after that it's Thanksgiving so uh, more than anything in, in this time uh, I was just thinking how when you're younger when you're a kid your minds are innocent you guys are, are pretty blessed right in, in most uh, most ways uh, and as you get older you reflect and you see things differently um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about being thankful to something uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving, right? So we got to give thanks for what we have, who we are, and what we do. And I know if I pass this microphone around, you're going to tell me you're thankful for your skateboard or your brother, right? Yeah. You're thankful for certain things. But as you get older, you reflect, and you're thankful for different things. Not material things that you see, but you're thankful. I'm thankful, and I'm going to share what I'm thankful for, and I hope to get through this line pretty quick because we have time today. But I am thankful for my the memory of my parents. I am thankful that I had my dad Bartolo, my mom Paula. They raised me with what they had, and they showed me how to work hard and do things. And I am thankful that they were my parents. And you guys have your parents, and you guys have your uncles and aunts and your church family that loves you. And I want you guys to be and reflect on that. Be thankful for who you have, what you got, uh, and and just always give thanks for everything okay so i'm going to walk around with the mic you don't have to but uh it'd be grateful that you gave thanks for maybe someone here right you always got someone taking care of you so uh let's start with you no okay <laughs> no it's right there um, I just, so. um i'm grateful for my house because it provides me a place to eat and sleep yeah. right on amen <laughs> Strictly. I'm thankful for my dad. For your dad, that was your thing. All right. My mom. For your mama. How about your dad? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my friends. For your friends. I like that. What are you thankful for? <laughs> it's something. I'm thankful for my mother. Very good, beautiful. I'm thankful for Elisa. Oh, that is awesome. They met last week, and they hit it off with their best friends. So, uh, thankful for her new best friend. That's awesome. Thankful for my family and dog. Very good. Two dogs, actually. Very good. Kevin? TJ? thankful for every little good thing I've had in my life. Awesome. Very good. Good? Yeah. Um, that I'm healthy. 
So you're helping with every bit. That's very good. Okay, you've had other things that people want to think about. Things. You've got one. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, your daddy? Okay. okay. Um, my family? Okay, your family. Your family, that's what it's about, okay? So, guys, while you're, wherever you're at, eating turkey, eating everything on the table, just reflect and be thankful for what you have, okay? And more importantly, give thanks to God for being so merciful, full of grace, and for sending Jesus, okay? So that's the message I want you guys to walk away with. Appreciate the people around you, and I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving, okay? So, go to time. Good morning, everybody. How are you? The Texas people say, how are y'all? Y'all. I'm learning. <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure for, uh, to be here with my family. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I'm part of this family. This is my house. So I feel so grateful to be here again. And uh, let's pray together and we'll be talking a little bit about the Word of God this, this morning. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, this morning for this great opportunity. We feel your spirit here, Lord. You are here. And this is amazing to know that we have access to your presence, Father, without condition, just because of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for these 25 years. Thank you for the life of everybody here. And I pray for your word to be in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brother, how are you? Good. Doing great? Uh, wow. Uh, full, full house today. It's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I feel so blessed. My wife is here. The kids are growing. And uh, well, life is good because Jesus is with us. So, uh, well, uh, I want to tell you, uh, it's, I've been reflecting a little bit and uh, during this uh, worship service this morning and and something like special to know it's we'll see you again in heaven we'll see brother Tom in heaven again Amen. we'll see brother Amen. in heaven again it's it's amazing and uh, it, it's a great opportunity in this earth to be connect but also the hope that we have in Jesus that will be connect with this person that we love again. That's special. So this morning, uh, Danny told me uh, a few weeks ago, brother, can you share something uh, about our series that we are uh, right now working in a kind of series or working in this uh, uh, topic about how we can connect with God, how we connect with God. We, we know that we have to do it, but how we can do it? Sometimes the how is harder to find. So I want to share a story uh, about my mom. My mom, she, she likes, she loves to cook, you know? She, she's a good, she's cooking a lot of things, and my wife as well, of course. But uh, this story is about a special uh, plate. And Ron, can you help me with uh, the first slide, please? Uh, the other one, please. Yes. Well, this is a special dish or special this time. If somebody's hungry, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> but this is some very special Venezuelan uh, food. It's called ajaca. Okay, ajaca. This, I mean, this plate is amazing. But it's the special part with this uh, food. It's only in December. You can eat it only for Christmas now. And it has a lot of ingredients. So it has a lot of work. So uh, it's common that, you know, every December my mom with the family all together preparing this, this food. So when I get married, I, I told my wife, I want to do it. I want to try it. I'm, I'm not a, you know, super 
gifted in this uh, area in my life. So I'm going to try to do it. But uh, I told my wife, I told my mom, Mom, can you send me, you know, the exactly receipt that you have? I mean, I want something the same like yours, you know, like the same receipt that your deepest secret with that. Send me that. I want to try. So she sent me that. And I have everything in the plate, all, all ingredients together. I was ready to prepare it. And I say, oh, this is going to be amazing. Guess what? was a mess. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even like to my own agenda. So I, I was wondering, what if I have all the ingredients together? What if I have all the secrets and exactly the same measurements and everything together? Why is it different if I have everything ready now in my paper? The secret is my mom wasn't there. <laughs> And the reality is, we have the Bible. We have many stories about people and Jesus Christ. But only we have a Jesus Christ present in our life, that is going to make a big transformation in our spirit. So the best <laughs> a jacket I could ever make was when my mom was beside me. And she was there, and she told me, okay, it's not the time. Uh, water, you, you got to wait a little bit more, more consistency. And I told her, well, you haven't told me about it, you know. <laughs> that would be nice to have that writing down, the perfect moment. But it wasn't. She, she just told me, it's on the perfect time. You got to wait. This is patient. You got to clean it. It's another dimension of what it had right is their relationship. So the relationship changed the world. That's why the Bible says it's better have love connection because the letter, the, 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 what you have writing, it's, it's powerful. But more powerful is the relationship. So uh, I'm wondering, uh, brothers and sisters, why this happened in our life that knowing so much about the Bible, I've been hearing, I don't know how many sermons in my life. And sometimes we struggle with the same situation over and over. And, and sometimes I know, I know the Bible, I know what, what they say, I know the problem, and I know the solution. But it doesn't change at all. And every time that I see that, it's because I take Jesus out from that point of that part of my life. It's the time when I say, okay, this is you know, it's not spiritual to put Jesus with me in this situation. So as soon as I do that, uh, my life changed. My life changed for completely. So I want you uh, to read with me, please, in John chapter 2. If you have the Bible here, if not, we have it in the screen. Read with me, uh, John chapter 2, uh, the Bible says, uh, this is uh, MV, NIV, I'm sorry. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby, Took six stone water jars, the kind used by the youth for ceremonial, ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, and they filled, they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where, the camp, where it had come from, though the servant who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the, bre the branch room uh, them as aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheapest, the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have 
say the best wine till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum uh, with his mother and brothers and his disciples. They are stayed for a few days. So, um, brother, this uh, text in the Bible, uh, it's, it's very special for many reasons. And uh, one of these reasons is Jesus and his disciples, they were in a party. In fact, it was a wedding, and you was wedding, they were long, around seven years. Oh, seven years, I hope. Seven weeks, seven days, that's seven weeks. Seven days, okay? Seven days in a party, which is it's a long party, you know? I've been in, in parties that one day, two days, my family used to do it, but seven days, uh, it, it's a lot of, of party, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a lot, of the, a lot of things to do, but Jesus was there with his disciples. So let me tell you what happened uh, in, that, in that moment. Jesus was there, enjoying the time, I'm pretty sure that he has a good attitude with his disciples, you know, enjoy the time. And in a moment, this happened. And I, I remember because my mom, I'm going to try to do what my mom did when she called me. So she used to cross his hand, and when she did this, I know something is coming, you know. <laughs> she's going to tell me something. So she's like that, and uh, when she needs something, she just called me like that, you know. And this is my mom. My mom, when she know that I can't do something, she just call me. And and in this time, and the Bible say that Mary talked to Jesus. So so let me tell you something. She knows that Jesus is God. She knows that He is complete human as well. But she still talked to Jesus, and she told Him. They ran out of wine. You know? Jesus created herself. He created the universe. But this mom, no, no matter if you are big, you have kids, you are, you know, you're married, mom is mom. You know? This is what my mom said, mom, amen? Mom's here, did I say amen? Yes. So she go to Jesus because she knew a couple of things that nobody else knew. And this is just because the relationship. My, my problem is, many people that I spend time with and talk with them, the last, the last option is, is Jesus, okay? They used to go different paths, different ways to find a solution for a situation. And the last one, the only option, or the last option is pastor or, or brother. I try everything. Can you pray for me now? And I say, oh, just keep the first step. You know, because the first one, the only one, yeah, that's, it's not going to turn in wine, but try. <laughs> <laughs> the first one uh, is Jesus. So, this first uh, miracle, uh, brothers, it's, it's what I call mom's receipt, okay? It's what it calls mom's receipt, because it's the first one, it's the first miracle in Jesus' ministry, and I, I can see in all the miracles the same prototype, the same way that Jesus performed different miracles in his life. It's the same way. He keeps doing the same thing all the time. So I want to share with you uh, these four ingredients. We are preparing a good a jacket today here. So there is four ingredients that I want to share this morning uh, with you. And the first one is, uh, Brother Ron, please. You must see the problem. There is better problem. You must see the problem. Look at this, guys. And the, and the party were all kind of people. Family, friends, guests. Uh, but also, the guys or those who were paid for prepare that wedding. And they, they were there just to take care of everything in that wedding. And guess what? The only person who realized or noticed that they ran, ran out of wine 
was mom, was Mary. And, and she was the only one, and she was, again, this is my mom, but, uh, they, <laughs> uh, they ran out of wine. So she noticed something is wrong. What if this is a big deal? Well, remember, wine was the main part of the wedding. As soon as they were run out of wine, no more wedding. And it's a big shame for, you know, the groom and the, and the bride. And the bride. Mm -hmm. It's a big shame of them. So, so Mary noticed that, and Mary uh, went to Jesus. And, and let me tell you this, you know, um, this happened with my wife, and I'm pretty sure this happened with uh, my mom and all women here. And this is a secret, guys, men of God, that I'm going to share with you today. Women can't see 120 degrees. <laughs> we can see only barely 80 degrees. So let's make a test. Put your finger here. I can't see it here. This is not even 90 degrees. But a woman, try. She said, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm moving it. Yeah. They have what, I'm going to try to say the word, but it's peripheral, I think. Vision, okay? They can see different. I'm gonna give you an example. That's barely happened. That's just not common in my life, but my wife is gonna tell about this. And sometimes, once in a while, I love my wallet. <laughs> Every day. So, uh, she's in the car, you know, with the kids. And I put the, you know, I go inside and try. The house upside down and try to find everything. And I can't find it. And I just walk to the car and thinking, doing it or not. And <laughs> you see my wallet, my channel. <laughs> and look, she is, you know, with makeup, doing some things. She is there. And she said, literally, that was the last time, she said, it's in the first drawer, uh, drawer of the next stand. Behind the keys that you also forgot, <laughs> and I can see them from here. <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> because, <laughs> because she is, she's amazing. I mean, she, she can see things that I can't. In church, this is a big blessing. Women can see things that men, we can't. And this is a big opportunity to serve the Lord. So I always say this to our brothers and sisters everywhere they go. It's when you see something that nobody else is seeing, it's God telling you, do it. Amen. It's not go and complain. Yeah. No. <laughs> if you see something, oh, I don't like that flag. It's like, you know. <laughs> it's your opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit telling you, well, and you, you are praying for ways to serve the Lord? Okay, do it. It's not an opportunity to complain, because guess what? If you complain, no more opportunity. No more chances. So, this is a, uh, this is not, somebody say, it's not a stone, it's not a rock. So, okay, number two, this is the first ingredient. You must see the problem. Number two, look for the only one who has the power. Busca el único que tiene el poder. Look for the only one. Mary looks directly to Jesus. Okay? This is for me the most important part. Jesus was the only one who had the power to transform something that will take years to be achieved. How, how many years do you think that it will take to prepare wine of the highest quality. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. They couldn't go to Costco. <laughs> they were in Costco there at that time. They they have to they had to wait. Okay, the wedding is done. What happened? Uh, we ran out of wine. Wow. So we're preparing guys. So the only one who has the power to transport something that will take years was Jesus. So let me tell you this important. If you are if you are under a situation like emotionally, physically, a disease, uh, 
something that is happening in your life right now, and you think that's not going to be changed overnight. Well, let me tell you in the name of Jesus, that can transform, Jesus can transform that right now if you believe it. I believe that. And I believe that because the Jesus, the same Jesus that transformed that water in, into wine is the same one that is telling me, believe in me. But somebody who believes, it's somebody who goes with him. It's not the last option. The first thing that Maria did, that Mary did, was, okay, we got it. I know the solution. She never goes to different other producers or wine producers and say, hey, you have more wine there? Or can we bring some other? She goes directly with the solution, Jesus Christ. And, and, and Jesus, was, Jesus' answer was, um, but what this situation, you know, is, what I'm doing, I mean, this is, this is not my business right now. What is going on, Mary? And she never, she never discussed with him, you know? <laughs> she never make an argument. She never did it. She just, okay, what she did. Next point, do what he tells you to do. So the Bible says she went to the uh, to the guys. Uh, how do you call it? I have the name here. Um, the servants, you know, the, the the guys who were serving the the wedding. She went with them and told them, do what he tells you to do. So, brother, sometimes I pray for miracles in my life. You know, Jesus, answer my prayer, please. And sometimes. Just because the answer never comes overnight, you know, I start to pray and say, you know, probably this is not going to happen. Or probably this is not what God wants in my life. So the thing is, you can't stop. You can't keep doing what he is telling you to do. So the first ingredient, remember, is you must see the problem. The second one is go with the only one who has the power. And the third is do what he tells you to do. Do what he tells you to do. Uh, Mary, uh, brothers and sisters, she uh, knew Jesus more than any other person. She knew that Jesus has a different power, uh, a special power to transform, situ transform situation. And I was wondering this week about that how she knew about that. How Mary knew that Jesus would transform every situation. And it's because she was living with him. She, she knew him since he, he born, he came to this earth. She, she had connection with him. She knew the time when Jesus was gonna do something special. So she was preparing the territory. So sometimes my family or some brothers in church telling you something, if they telling you something, it's because God is going to put something in your heart that you probably are not prepared to receive it. But as soon as somebody told you something, uh, probably they are preparing the territory for that, for that miracle, brothers. And the last one, the last one is, brother Ron, please, try and share it. Uh, this part is crucial, in my opinion, for this miracle. Uh, you can, you know, you can see the problem, and you can go with Jesus Christ, all right? But if you don't participate on this, if you don't do what he tells you to do, the problem is you will be a believer, but a kind of believer that never do something. It's the kind of people that believe. Uh, just. Yeah, I think it's good. I think God is good. I think that God can do things in our life. But this person never will experience what is faith. And I'm going to tell you what these two guys, or these guys here, experience in their life. And they never expect that in their life. Okay? The Bible says that Jesus told them, fill these jars with water. He was talking to the servants. Those servants who heard a woman say, do what he told you to do. So these two, or, or these guys, they probably, you know, they probably could say, hey, who is that guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm my son. 
Pero, you know, is he the guy who's gonna pay? You know, who is that guy? So this is one of the first arguments from people who don't believe in Jesus. What he is offering to me. What if you had a hero, a guy from the Bible 2,000 years ago? What he has in his pocket to offer to me. But these guys, they just they just go with Jesus. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, your mom told us. Yeah. And Jesus told him, fill the jars with, with what? Water. 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 <laughs> Big step faith, man. Water, this, you know, this is wine. We need wine. You know, people here are not big fan of water, you know. <laughs> you is, you know. So, okay, let's put water on it. Okay? Simple water. Two guys. They don't understand anything what is going on. But the, la the last part of this command was even more amazing. Go and give it to the, your boss. <laughs> uh, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye job. I mean, I'll be fired immediately. I can't offer water. And the, the amazing part for me is they did it. They take that and they went to the other guy. I think they were shaking because they were water. Best wine here. And the other guy take the water and taste it. And I can't imagine, I, I'm on the story, you know, because I can't imagine the other guys like, and the boss and the, you know, the, the, the main guy there, wow, this is the best wine that I ever tried before. So imagine these guys who were transporting the water. They don't understand anything about salvation, but they were witnesses of the first miracle in Jesus' life. So what I want to tell you today is sometimes we don't understand many things. We don't understand how this is going to work. That's why Jesus said, just pray. Give, let me do the, you know, the part that you don't understand. Just pray. Ask, and you will receive. So these two guys, wow. They were witness of the most amazing miracle in Jesus' life, the first one. So, I want to share with you, uh, brothers and sisters, about Jesus came to this earth to be the provider or wine. What we just did, you know, share the Lord's Supper this morning, wasn't remembered of him. He is our wine, the highest quality wine. And he said, the wine represents my blood. So do it, do this in memory of me. So what we have to do in Jesus is a relationship. I'm going to finish uh, today with a story that happened this Thursday or Friday. Friday, Friday with my son, David. Uh, I think God talked to me a lot through my kids. So Friday, we were brought into an activity with my son, David, you know. The last week before Thanksgiving, and he was just like one of the uh, better students in school, so we were so proud of him and nice. So they, the whole week was dedicated to him. Like he was sharing things about his life, and, and the last day was about go and have lunch with him and play with him during break time, you know? So we were ready. So that Friday morning, I, I was, you know, in the men's office and say, well, I'm ready for 12, you know, and she said, have you the TV uh, test? TV test? I had the coffee test in case of the <laughs> No TV test. TV test, what is that? Yeah, tuberculosis. And I said, oh, my word. No. Oh, you got to go and get it. Three days in order to get it. So my son, he was waiting the whole week for this month. And he was very disappointed. So I was desperate because I was like, man, I want to be, I really want to be with him. So I went to Popeye's. He really loved those sandwich chicken. It's not an advertisement or whatever, but it's good. <laughs> so I went to Popeye's and bring one of those sandwiches and, he, and I gave to him. 
and I say, sorry, but I can't play with you today. He, he, don't even, he don't even realize about that sandwich. He was like, I'm fierce, like, what? And I explained him. And he said, and I also forget my uh, stuffed animal. Okay, I'll, I'll get one. So I went to Walmart, I bought one, and I came back, and I gave it to him. And he was even, he was crying even more. So in that moment, I knew, you know, anything can replace a relationship with God. There is not anything in this world that can fill our spirit more than Jesus Christ, brothers. So that's why this morning, I want to share with you about this receipt. And, and I hope you, I hope you like it, and I hope you share it with others. God bless you, brothers. So we're going to stand, and we'll sing this song of invitation. If you are in need of prayer, if you're there we go. If you're in need of prayer, if you need to respond to the invitation and, and what the Jonathan has us share with us, we're going to sing this next song, which is appropriate. In order to have a relationship with Christ, we need to surrender everything to Him, listen to Him. Let's sing this song. If you are wanting to respond, please come forward and raise your hand, and we'll we'd love to take you to God. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all to Him, my I will let
uh, for the time that we had. You, you brought so much joy in, in, into our lives. And Father, we, uh, this morning we remember Tommy as, as, we, as it was his birthday today. And, and as, we, uh, as we have fellowship and celebrate lunch together, uh, we pray, Father, that you would bless the food that we're about to partake of. Uh, we pray, Father, that, that you continue to watch over us. And Father, we thank you for Jonathan and being able to hear him uh, share your word with us this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As you said, we're going to be having a lunch provided by the Reed family again. 25 years here as a church, as a family, okay? And we're going to uh, just do this next song here, a favorite of Tommy's, and we'll be dismissed. Okay? Thank you. My God and I, the Lord of we walk and talk as good friends should and do. We clasp our hands, our faces lit with laughter. My God and I walk in the meadows too. We clasp our hands, our faces lit with laughter. My God and I.